So good morning everybody. We're going to do a video today on how to make chocolate cherry bread. I'm going to call it black forest bread. So we start off, we got our cherries, pitted cherries. There's about 375 to 390 grams. So here we have all of our ingredients here. Here's our flour. It is bread flour, 500 grams. Over here is sugar. It's about two teaspoons, about a tablespoon. I got two tablespoons of melted butter. Uh, right there is a teaspoon and a half of salt. And right there is our yeast. That's two and a half teaspoons. Temperature's like bath water. That's about 100 degrees. I don't get too fussy with measuring the temperature. Okay, so we're gonna add the sugar. And the yeast. Give a little stir. And then uh, we'll give that like five or ten minutes. So here's our yeast. Ooh, look how puffy that is and everything. I never really worry so much about that. I mean, I used to make bread by just adding the yeast to the flour as it was mixing in, didn't worry about proofing it. but. I think uh, this fast acting yeast is very forgiving, so either way, it's going to be okay. So now, I'll, all I got to do now is add, uh, I'm going to go ahead and add the flour. And the salt. I really don't do a lot of the um, kneading by hand as much anymore. So it's going to be a lot just juice in the mixer. That's the nice thing about the KitchenAid. Before I get too carried away, I'll go ahead and add the uh, butter. The one thing I you get um, you have to watch for with this bread, when you add the cherries, it's going to get really wet. So we're going to add an extra flour as that goes in. And I didn't, so I didn't add a lot of extra water. We, we started off with, I think, with a 240, which is about a cup of water to proof the yeast, and then I just added a little bit of drizzle more just so that it's neat and good. And we'll let it mix for like another couple of minutes total. And you can see it's looking pretty, it's still looking wet, so I'm going to add more flour. Okay, back up a little bit. Okay. Ooh. Okay, I got a clean surface. I am going to need it just a little bit, maybe. Need it a little bit in here. It looks dry. Well, it's going to get wet when we add more all the cherries. Mm. <clears throat> okay, the problem is last time when I made it, when I would have it in the mixer and then add the cherries, it, it wouldn't get incorporated that well into it. Okay, so here I got our chocolate, a cup of dark and a cup of white. And then here's our, um, I'm going to actually take a paper towel to it. I mean, ideally, I guess you want this thing to be sitting for a long time. I think the, uh, those are older cherries that have been in the fridge for a little bit. That's why they're mushier. And then I'm just going to fold it over. So when we put it in the... 
back in here that I don't really think much about. Okay. We gotta knead it a little bit more and it's gonna get really wet, so we'll be adding a little bit more flour. like my grandma until it feels right it's kind of you can't give exact measurements all the time so yeah you have to because you know it depends on what time of year is the heat on is it muggy and humid outside do you follow the rule of cleaning up as you go in the kitchen like my mom used to do no okay so that's very wet now, so we're gonna be adding more. We mean, so this is manageable now. It's not too sticky, and you always would rather have your bread be more on the wet side. It feels pretty good. Anyway, so anyway, that looks pretty well mixed. We're gonna put it in here. I'm gonna cover it with plastic wrap and a paper towel, and let it rise for probably an hour and a half to two hours. I like to have a good seal around it if it's not sticking real well, so I'll throw a rubber band around it. All right, so you cover it, and then what I do is I'll put the oven on, 350 for one minute and shut it off, and then I'll put it in. Okay, it's been actually hour and 45 minutes. I kind of like to go too far, but let's see what we got. Oh, that looks awesome. That really rolls nicely. The magic of yeast, or the science of yeast. Okay, so then what we're gonna do, got my hands are washed. I'm gonna, so you should always have these things ready, and wash and dry it. It's what happens. You should probably dry as you, wash and dry as you go. That probably would be a good idea. Uh-huh, hmm but it wasn't done here by my helper. Oh. <laughs> 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 that is very wet. So we're adding more flour. Okay, so we're gonna go next. And now we need a little bit. Divide it into three. Doesn't have to be perfectly equal or anything. We're gonna have, end up with three ropes. They are very wet. I'm keep these in the shape. Then we're gonna let these just sit are for five. Are they even or are you gonna roll them out more? We'll, we'll roll them out a little bit more, but we're gonna let them relax. I've heard you need to let your dough relax a while, so we'll be back in five minutes with these. I'm going to roll these out a little bit. I want them to be a little bit longer. <clears throat> we'll try and get them even if we can. Okay, so we're going to braid it just like you would a girl's hair. So you're going to put the two, you're going to take the two ends at the top and kind of pinch them together. And you're always going to be aware of what the center rope is. So you're going to take, start with the left, going to break, take the left over the middle, and now you have a new center. So then you're going to take the right now and go over the center rope. Then you're just going to repeat, do the left over the center, and then the right over the center. Now the left over the center, and the right over the center. 
left over the center and right over the center. Left over the center, right over the center. And I don't know if we're going to get another one. Yeah, just kind of put it together. Then when you get to the end, you want to kind of pinch them. And what we're going to do is turn it, turn the ends under and push it up to kind of secure it. Then you want to take the top part also and turn that under nice. and pinch it up. So there you have a braid. Nice. Nice job on the wrapping, by the way. That's awesome. So just to be sure you don't want it to come apart, I will check the ends again and tuck them, make sure they're tucked under. So we're going to cover that up with a, I guess, saran wrap and a towel and let that rise again for probably an hour. Five. Oh, and look at that. Oh, does that look good? And I'm going to set the timer. I think that you're saying he says 425 for about 20 minutes and then down to I think 350 or so. And that's what it looks so far. So it's looking, looking like it's getting done pretty quick. I'm going to put it up a little bit higher. Because it's looking like it's already getting pretty round and ready. I can't remember what I said before, but I put it on a little higher rack. And the temperature went down to 350. I set the timer for 10 minutes. And this is where we're at. So it looks it looks done. I don't want to over bake it, so I'm does that sound hollow? Yeah, mm. Chocolate is gooey. It's yummy. This is my favorite. So good it doesn't even need the butter. <laughs> chocolate. Oh, can't do better than chocolate and bread. And the cherry balances out the sweetness. Wow, you should be a food critic. That's good. Oh. 